Cool. We've got some Marcus Davis here. <laughs> Questions? Hey, Tamarcus. When um, you guys are, you know, moving on from four guys who started a lot in the secondary, uh, and you're kind of the most senior returning guy experience wise, what does that feel like? And how does that maybe change the role that you have either uh, locally or by your actions? It changed a lot. It's a total <clears throat> role change you know, for me personally, um, and for the group all together, it's just um, a lot of new faces and you, you know, you miss some of the, the old faces that were leaders. So not that anyone told me, you know, I was eventually, you know, told like kind of being pushed to be that, to be the leader of the group. But I kind of thought to myself, you no, know, we need a leader and not nothing against anyone that um, came before me, but you you watch the people that do lead you and you learn from them, good and bad, you know? So I learned a lot from them. And while I was learning, I didn't know that I would eventually get this opportunity. But while I was, you know, being led by those guys, I was learning like, okay, if I did lead the group, I would do it like that too. I'll do it like this or, you know, so I was always kind of constantly being prepared, not knowing it. Um, and it feels good. I mean, honestly, I've, I've always, I've never been a follower. I've always been a leader. Even if, you know, I'm in a position where I have to be a follower, I still have a leader mindset. So I, I don't feel uncomfortable or anything like that. What's your style as a leader? As a leader, I, I motivate everyone to be a leader too. I don't, I want to, I want everybody to be a leader. I want them to, when I mess up, I want them to say something to me. And I just want it to be to where everybody's comfortable and everybody can break out the huddle. You know, everybody can call the play. Everybody can be the person to be, you know, it doesn't always have to be me to say, hey, you know, everybody come together. We ain't doing this right. We need to get our attitude together. You know, it could be from the youngest guy to the oldest guy. And that's kind of, I want this like, all encompassing thing like we are all the you know we got to be prepared to we all got to be prepared to do the same thing so to marcus even though you were placing four starters uh in the defensive backfield from last year it seemed like it was more or less established it was in the cornerback position uh, compared to the safety one uh as you you know saw the safety group in action all throughout spring practice uh what's what's your sense of uh that uh unit uh, going into full camp uh, I feel like um, as a corner, what you look for, you know, in your kind of partners and the guys you're playing with is just really security. You know, you don't want to look up and be like, damn, he always getting caught on, you know? Like, damn, he keep getting, you know, I didn't feel that way. I feel with my, especially with my safeties, you know, if I got to play underneath, I know they're going to be over the top, you know? Or if I'm outside leverage, they're inside and vice versa, you know? So I feel safe, you know? I feel good about that. I feel like I can. I can go and play aggressive and know that the other guys got my back. What's your perspective on how the defense might be different than last year? Um, I would say be different. I would expect us to be able to acknowledge adversity and be able to manage it you know, well, and not kind of like, because, you know, football is this big momentum game and defensively and you're on the field for long drives and they're seeing success and you're watching them be successful. It's like, dang, hold on. But I think this year we'll be able to like, okay, here, here comes adversity. You know, don't, let's not, we're not, you know, surprised because we knew this is coming. You know, I think we're just going to handle that more, way more in a better way. Do you feel there's enough experience, especially in the defensive backfield, to really handle all that adversity that may come your way throughout the season? For sure. For sure. I mean, we all play. It's funny with, the, with experience, you know. Um, I mean, me personally, I'm playing football since I could read and talk and do all that, you know. So the experience is just funny. It's just like we, I play football, you know. I, I do that. And we all have been doing it for a long time, but 
it is um, the experience with adversity in particular. Um, it just takes experience. That's all. The first time, and if it's a young, say if it's a young guy in that situation, you know, you just gotta hopefully one of the vets or one of the leaders on the team just pull him aside and be like, "Calm down, bro. Just play football. We in the backyard right now. We good." The, the, the new faces, not only in the defensive backfield, but also the wide receiver spot uh, coming out of spring uh, practice uh, to Marcus. What, what was your read on that on that wide receiver group, especially with all the new faces uh, that were there in spring practice? Um, it was good. It was good. I mean, I like to uh, experience new, you know, new, new route combinations, new guys, see how they move and stuff. I felt like it was good. And um you know, it's always a little different with offense because they have the timing aspect of it all and getting a new quarterback. So their time, they're going to have, you know, some the timing is going to get better. You know, the routes are going to look a little different. The ball is going to come a little better. But so, yeah. What's the vibe been like with some of the new defensive backs, um, a couple new safeties that join you guys in the – in the uh, spring, Chris and Corey, the corners that are coming in now. And what do you think about just what they bring to the table? Uh, Chris and Corey, they just, they've, they're adjusted to the team now. They're just, you know, they're one of the guys now. And if one of y'all walked in the room, y'all be like, oh, you think they've been here for three years, you know? And the new guys, they're, they're brand spanking new. And it, it'll get a lot better when we get into camp and spend a lot more time with each other. But right now they're just like they're new, you know. They're trying to make sure they check every box, and you know, when you're new, you don't want to step on nobody's toes or act out too outlandish or anything like that. So I think they're just getting adjusted and meshing and trying to gel with the team still. And you know, we got guys from Texas, and I'm sure all over everywhere else, getting used to this heat. So they just, I think they're just taking it in, just like any new any new person would, like a sponge, you know. If somebody had told you that you were going to, I think it's your sixth year now, uh, 20, going back to 2017 to now, uh, would that be a surprise? And how do you reflect on the journey that you've had uh, to, to this point in your career? Yeah, I'd be like, you're crazy. I don't want to be in college that long. Like, you know, I, I think I'm, I would have been like, I'm I, I, like, dang, I must, you know, I must not be good. Like, I must not be a good player if you're in college that long, that's what I would say, you know, my younger self, but now I understand, you know, injuries, I thank God I didn't really suffer any too bad injuries, anything like that, but like, it's like football, that's why I love football, like, it's circumstantial, like, life is circumstantial, you know, and you got to read and react to it, and that was, that was just life, that was, that was my story, you know, I ended up transferring, sitting out a year, COVID happened, no one could have predicted that, you know, and if, if, if it didn't, last year would have been my last year. And, I, I, you know, it's a, it's a blessing that I got another one, you know, to, to help lead these guys and show, you know, maybe some younger guys what not to do and what to do. And maybe, you know, he gets to leave college a little sooner than I do and go get, make some millions of dollars, you know. And I, I think that would be pretty cool. And um, looking back on it, uh, it was it was a hell of a ride. It was I loved it. I loved it. It was it was a great experience. It taught me a lot about being on my own, you know, move away from home, and it taught me a lot how to be a man, how to live on your own, you know. Can't call mama and mama ain't down the street no more, you know. So you learn how to. I mean, mama, she taught me how to wash my clothes, but all those small things you got to do every. You got to do it all, man. You got to wake yourself. She ain't calling me and waking me up every morning, you know. Little, little things like, so I really do appreciate just that the fact that I have the willingness to, to come out here and be by myself and stuff like that. And fo uh, college football is crazy. Like it, I've seen it change. I was seeing it change from when it wasn't a portal to being a portal, players getting paid, you know, millions of dollars, you know, I didn't get, you know, I didn't quite get to see all that money, but it's just, this has been crazy, man. I mean, I wouldn't trade it this experience for the nothing in the world. And maybe one day I'll write a book about it or something. What, what about seeing Jack and Chase get drafted 
and knowing that this is your uh, last season to be able to put your work on film so that you can have a, your own similar type of experience next year. Yeah, uh, seeing them seeing them do it and be in the league, I'm like, hell yeah, like, I think I can do it. I, you know, I think I can really do this. You know, I know I can really do this. But, and then, you know, I love those guys. I said it was up to Jack in the hallway. But, you know, and a lot of, a big, a big part of me is like, hell yeah, I'm kind of glad they gone. Like, I finally get to play and have some fun out there with my boys. Yep.